This is indistinguishability of piscation from simple to state hard problems, new assumptions, new techniques, and simplification for Eurocrypt 2021. I'm Romain Gay, and this is joint work with Ayush Jain, Rachel Lin, and Amit Sahai. First, uh, let me recall to you what is indistinguishability obfuscation. Um, basically, it's an efficient compiler that takes a program pi and turns it into a functionally equivalent program pi tilde. And uh, if there is another program delta that has the same functionality uh, pi and the same size, then it's computationally uh, hard to distinguish the obfuscation of pi from the obfuscation of delta. So in other words, indistinguishability obfuscation hides, preserves the functionality, but hides the implementation details, uh, the implementation differences between two programs of the same size. And maybe look a little artificial. And in fact, there's a more natural simulation variant uh, notion of obfuscation, but it turns out to be impossible. However, uh, artificial it may seem, the IO notion is extremely versatile and very powerful. In fact, uh, virtually all of the existing cryptographic applications that we know of are implied, can be constructed from IO and minimal cryptographic assumption. And beyond this amazing unifying aspect, IO has also been successful at enlarging the cryptographic horizons. In fact, uh, it has helped us envision new construction that was uh, unimaginable before. And some of these uh, objects that I've listed here actually have been later on built from standard assumption. Given this amazing power, it's important to build IO from stable grounds. In particular, we'd like some uh, security proof where the underlying assumption is uh, simple. And in fact, we want to have um, provable security so that it makes a crypto cryptanalyst job easier. So in that sense, we want the assumption to be uh, to have a, a sexy description and to be understandable even by non-IO experts. We want the assumption to be falsifiable, instance independent. For, in for instance, if you build an obfuscator for all polynomial size circuits, you do not want one assumption per circuit. In fact, instead, we rather have a constant number of assumptions. So all these desirable features for assumption are, uh, can be succinctly called as simple to state. And in our work, we build the first IO from simple to state harmless assumption without multilinear maps. And this work has been a stepping stone towards the celebrated result, uh, Jamelin Sahai, that gave the first IO from well-founded assumption, that is long-standing and long-studied assumptions. Our assumptions are simple to state, but one of them is actually new. In fact, uh, we build IO from three assumptions. The first one is learning with error assumption, the standard uh, assumption. Second one is a standard assumption on bilinear maps, also known as pairings. And the third one is new, and it's a LW is leakage assumption. I'll tell you more about this later. And as is typical for IO, all these assumptions needs to be sub-exponentially secure. Now let me talk about this LW with leakage assumption. It's an interaction of two long-studied assumptions. First one being LW with binary error. And the second is the uh, existence of constant depth Boolean PRGs. So LW with binary error, roughly, says that it's hard to distinguish a bunch of linear equations with some binary noise from truly random values. And what's different from the standard LWE assumption is that this doesn't hold no matter what the number of sample is. In fact, if the number of sample n is roughly lambda, the dimension of the secret, 
maybe a tiny bit, tiny bit more, then there is a reduction from worst case lattice assumption, just like the standard LWE assumption. However, if the number of sample n is quadratic in the dimension of the secret, then there is an efficient algorithm, a polynomial time algorithm that breaks the assumption. The parameter regime we are interested in is in between. It's when the number of samples n is slightly less than quadratic in the secret dimension. In this regime, best known attack are sub-exponential. And this is a parameter we will care about. Now, a constant depth Boolean PRG um, can be expressed uh, with a constant de degree polynomial over the integers. Namely, every output bits of the PRG uh, can be expressed as the output of, the, uh, of a function on the input bits. And this function can be uh, written as a polynomial. Uh, over the integers. And because the circuit is constant depth, that means the polynomial will be of constant degree d. And in fact, if uh, the stretch is not too big with respect to the degree of the PRG, then uh, there are uh, constructions that are believed to be secure for which the best attacks are sub-exponential. The limit is uh, when the stretch m is slightly less than n to the d over 2. And uh, we use a regime that's significantly lower, where we only need a uh, stretch to be n to the slightly more than d over 4. And uh, this constant depth Boolean PRG has a long history of studies, including in our work, where we give some new uh, candidate PRGs. Now, if we put these two things together, we have our new assumption, LWE with the cage which essentially says that um, given a PRG uh, of constant depth, that means constant degree. And um, we, uh, the, the pseudo randomness of this generator um, remains, even if we give LWE sample with binary noise, where the noise is the seed of the PRG. A bunch of linear equations with noise and the evaluation of the PRG on that noise is computationally indistinguishable from this same linear noisy equation and uniformly random values. In some sense, it's a, sort of like a circular flavor, you know, between uh, the security of the PRG and the security of uh, LWE with binary noise. Of course, as I said, uh, this only holds when the number of samples is slightly less than quadratic with a uh, dimension of the secret S, and when the stretch of the PRG is uh, less than n to the d over 2, and in our case, n to the d over 4 and a bit more is sufficient. This is the parameter we consider. In fact, uh, in our paper, we give more details and we give a survey of the different attacks that exist. And as I said, we also give new PRG candidates. I'm not going to tell you more about that. I'll ask you to read the paper if you're interested. So our theorem is that if you assume the polynomial hardness of the LWA assumption, a standard assumption over bilinear maps, and this new LWA with leakage assumption, then there exists um, public key FE with sublinear efficiency. And furthermore, if you assume sub-exponential hardness of this underlying assumption, then uh, we show that you can have there exists a sub-exponentially secure FE, which is known to give IO. Let me show you how we build this public key FE. We combine three building blocks. Um, namely, the first one will be a special homomorphic encryption that we build from LWE. This is new. A second one uh, is a new FE that um, is uh, only for restricted class of function that we build from bilinear maps. And the third one is a um, special PRG from this new LW with leakage assumption and the existence of uh, PRG in NC0. 
I will tell you more about this. So all of these are new, and we combine them to directly build public key FE. And what's new is that uh, this transformation has only a polynomial security and efficiency loss. All right, and this, as I said, is known to be value. So this is the first time uh, that uh, the public key FE from polynomial hardness assumption is built. The advantage also uh, it's that it's much more direct. Our construction has fewer steps than prior works. Uh, so it's uh, both more efficient and also conceptually simpler. Uh, actually, I will take the opportunity to mention that it has been recently discovered that there are some subtle technical issues in, in uh, one part of the proof of uh, prior works in the security amplification. Uh, it doesn't apply to our work because we have simpler bootstrapping. This is the advantage. Our construction is overall much more direct and simple. All right. So in the rest of the talk, I will basically go over all these building blocks. And before that, I will at least define uh, what is public key sublinearly sub -linearly efficient FE, which is what we want to build. So, um, uh, FE is a public key encryption scheme where you have this special secret key that's called master secret key. And it's possible to downgrade this master secret key into weaker or partial secret keys. In particular, if you have a, fun a function f in the master secret key, it's possible to provide a so-called functional secret key for that f, sk sub f. And given sk sub f, decryption will recover not the entire message m that was encrypted, but only the value f evaluated on m. In particular, if uh, that allows users to uh, fine tune exactly what kind of information about the message is revealed. And we care about functional encryption schemes, which can handle arbitrary function, all circuits. Other security say that given one secret key SK sub F and one ciphertext, this information essentially can be simulated from only knowing the value F of M and also the function F, which is not hidden. A uh, technical challenge is to build such a uh, fee where the encryption running time is sublinear in the output size of the function f. In fact, this is believed, this is not believed, this is proven to give IO. Okay, so this is what we will build. This is what we want. Uh, how do we build it? We start with some homomorphic encryption scheme that has some special properties. And such concept, such notion has been introduced by Agrawal Rosen. 2017. Basically, it's an homomorphic encryption scheme. So you start with an encryption of bits. You, go, you can homomorphically evaluate a function f. So far, so good. You can also homomorphically evaluate on the public key. That's new. And there's a special decryption property that says to decrypt this evaluated ciphertext, all you need to do is perform an inner product of this evaluated public key with the secret key of the scheme and then round. So this suggests a uh, construction for general purpose FE, which is a hybrid construction. It will use a special, this special homomorphic encryption and an FE which only supports inner product and rounding. Building general purpose FE boils down to building FE for inner product and rounding. Basically, the bulk of the work, the evaluation of the arbitrarily complex function F is done on the um, homomorphic encryption. And F is only used to run the decryption, the special decryption. That's the overall ID. But there's a problem. In fact, we don't really know how to build a fee for inner products and rounding, especially the rounding part. This is unknown. 
And it's crucial that we do the rounding because if we reveal the noise, the FHE decryption noise, then the scheme is insecure. So instead uh, of the rounding, our idea was to produce a pseudo random noise. So the FE will not do the rounding, but it will compute um, this, as I said, pseudo random noise that will hide this FHE decryption noise. All right. Uh, so we build actually a new special homomorphic encryption scheme from LWE for all circuits. And that is inspired by the predicate encryption scheme from GVW. All right. So let me give you more detail of what we do. We, as I said, uh, we perform the decryption <clears throat> of the homomorphic encryption via the FE. So we FE encrypt the secret key and the seed. And then for every uh, output bits of the function F, we give a um, functional secret key that will compute the inner product plus some pseudo random noise computed on the seed, uh, which will hide this FHE decryption noise. So now you may be wondering why do we actually use pseudo random noise and not truly random noise? The reason is that uh, we want ciphertexts that are short, sublinear in the output size of the function. We actually require a peer G with some non-trivial stretch so that the seed is actually less than the output size. That's the reason we use a PRG. All right. In fact, it's using this uh, FE that can compute a PRG is not specific to our work. It's a global general paradigm that has been used before. And in particular, before it was built, <clears throat> some FE scheme, functional encryption schemes, that can handle degree two polynomials with 16 ciphertext from standard assumption. So that's, that's great. So naturally, we would like to combine this to run a PRG, which is also of degree two. And what does that mean? The PRG, um, every output bit of the PRG can be expressed as a, the evaluation of a degree two polynomial over the inputs, just like here. Okay, uh, this is exactly what we could uh, handle with such an FE scheme. However, there's no such uh, degree to PRG. We don't know how to build this in a secure way. Uh, in fact, there's some evidence that it could even be impossible to do such uh, degree to PRG. It's not good enough. We need something a bit more. So why not degree three? Well, there are candidates of degree three PRG. However, there's no construction of degree three FE. The only known construction of all three linear maps, which is not a standard assumption. Given this unfortunate state of affair, what we do is something in between. We'll essentially give uh, an FE that can compute degree two. We are stuck at degree two from two linear maps, but uh, the FE we will build does something more. Uh, it's called a partially hiding FE. I will tell you more later. It does, it has to, the message has basically two parts, one part which is public and one part which is secret. It does a degree two on the secret part, but it does something more complex on the public part. And that means we can run a PRG, which is degree two in a secret part of the seed, but degree more than two on the public part of the seed. If you want degree two and a half or something like this, something a bit stronger than degree two. And in fact, so we built such a special structured seed PRG uh, from uh, these assumptions, provably secure from these assumptions. And uh, we also build a new partially hiding FE from two linear maps. And combining these two uh, solves the problem of uh, you know, building FE uh, that can do inner product and generate some pseudo random noise. All right, let's delve more into the details about what, all these, what these objects are. So partially hiding FE. As I said, it's like 
now we have a message which has two parts, a public part and a secret part. And we generate functional secret keys so that um, we can compute NC1 function on the public part and degree two on the private part. And that also reveals us to the, the public part is actually not hidden. Right. So this ciphertext and this secret key reveals all of this information, the evaluation of the function and the public part. And we build this from bilinear maps. That can be used with a new kind of PRG, which is we call structured seed PRG, which has where the seed has two parts, public part and a secret part. And the PRG computes a degree two polynomial on the secret part of the seed. And uh, degree D, where D could be larger than two polynomial on the public part of the seed. So now let's take some time to think about this structured CPRG. You may be wondering, well, is this useful at all? Does it actually generalize the notion? Does it structured seed makes it stronger? Isn't just that uh, PRG of degree two, if you consider C, the public part of the city is just a description of the PRG. The reason is no, it actually gives you something because the secret part and the public part of the city can be arbitrarily correlated. So it may not be uh, possible to conditionally sample the secret part of the city given the public. It's actually giving you more power. So here is our structured CPRG. You start with a normal PRG of constant degree. By normal, I mean which is not structured seed. The public part of the seed will be a bunch of um, LWE uh, samples with binary noise. And the secret part of the seed will be powers of the secret S. You take this vector S and you compute all the powers until D over two, where D, remember D is the degree of the PRG, this guy. Okay, and how do you execute how do you run the structured CPRG? Well, basically what you compute is uh, this vector B from the public seed minus A times S, where A is from the public seed and S is from the secret seed. Compute this and you run, it gives you a, a vector of bits. Actually, this is equal to E. You run the PRG, Capital J, capital G, sorry, on, on, on this, okay? And so this is pseudo random. This is just a PRG run on a random seed. And how can you compute this? Well, this is of degree D. Uh, so you can perform, uh, the FE allows you to perform degree D computation on the public part of the seed, but only degree two, the secret part of the seed. That's why we need to pre-compute all these powers to the D over two of the secret S. All right, so you need to compute a degree D polynomial on S. However, FE only allows degree two. So you need to compute, pre-compute all the degree D over two. Only the last multiplication can be done using the FE. Let, let's me try to motivate why we do uh, when we build it like this. So basically, you can always pre-compute. If you have a degree D PRG, but you only have a degree two, two uh, FE, where D is larger than two, uh, well, you can always pre-compute the seed. You compute powers of the seed. <coughs> However, this pre-computed seed will be too large. And that's the problem. So we need to compress it. There's two ways we compress it. The first way is by using this LWE is binary noise. Because now we see that the seed of the capital G is bigger than S. So S is a compression of the actual seed. 
So that's the first number one. Number two is actually uh, we don't need to compute powers of s up to d, but only d over two because we have quadratic f. All right, and that turns out to be critical. If you were using a linear f, like linear in the secret seed, that would be too large. The secret seed will actually be uh, will make this s p r g meaningless. The stretch would not be enough. All right, so the quadratic compression given by the FE is cr crucial. All right, so that's it. Uh, let me conclude. So we build a new, uh, we define the notion of structure of CPRG. We build it, we give a new construction from uh, the existence of PRG in NC0, constant depth, and this new LW with, with leakage assumption. And by the way, the easy follow up uh, work of uh, Jane, Lin, and Sahai follows this paradigm by building a stricter CPRG. But basically, instead of this LW with leakage or something, they use a learning parity with noise for large fields. Right. There are also other differences in their construction that I'm not going to go into details. Basically, that's it. They replace this new assumption by a long-studied assumption, LPN. All right, so uh, together with this SPRG, we build a new partially hiding public key FE that allows NC1 computation on the public part of the input and degree two computation on the secret part of the input. We build this from standard assumption on bilinear maps. This is new and it improves upon prior work which were only capable of doing either degree one on the secret part of the input, which as I said, is not enough, or they were actually not computing uh, on the public part of the input. They were just playing quadratic FE. And also again, that, was, that, doesn't, that cannot be combined with uh, suitable PRG, or there were actually also prior works we were, uh, which were doing degree two, which is great, uh, NC zero, that's, we do NC1, but actually we do, we do not use NC1, we only use NC0. But the main drawback is they're actually only in the secret key setting. They do not build a public key FE, but a secret key FE. However, we directly build a public key FE. That means less bootstrapping is required and we directly get a public key FE in the end. Simpler construction, basically. All right, and that's, uh, combined with these special homomorphic encryptions from LWE will give public key FE. This is the big picture. All right. A uh, couple of open problems. The first one, as I said, we actually build an FE that's slightly overkill for our SPRG because we do not exploit uh, the fact that we can compute NC1 on the public part of the input. So could we have, uh, could we use that to, for example, get the same, uh, but from higher quality PRG? Another uh, line of questions is um, about this partial hiding at fee, which is a primitive that is crucial to our construction and which is also interesting in its own right. Because PHFE, uh, if you think about it, is kind of a mix between the access structure on the public input like ABE and a functional encryption on the secret input. So it combines the two things, which is interesting. And in fact, you can ask, well, can we actually improve the expressivity of uh, the PHFE in any possible way? For example, instead of NC1, can, can we do polynomial size circuits? That's not known. Or can we do degree three? Well, that would be giving IO essentially. So that would be fantastic, but even something weaker. Can we, for example, do, let's say, even NC0 for degree two on the private input, but from a post-quantum assumption? That's not known. And it will actually, so here we do it from pairing, uh, but if we could do it from LWE or lattice-based assumption, for example, the whole thing would be plausibly post-quantum. That would be very interesting. Um, and also another line of question is about this uh, LWE with leakage assumption. I'm sure, um, actually the follow-up, Jane Lin Sahai moved the need for this assumption, but still there's some advantage of our construction in terms of efficiency, but also more fundamentally, 
this L W is leakage uh, is a natural problem that essentially it will be worthwhile to study because uh, there are actually many other constructions that has this sort of circular variance. And in fact, if you if you think about it, LW with leakage is a sort of a circular variance. So it will give some insight to study more in depth this new assumption. It may uh, allow us to understand better other construction that also use circular assumption, or uh, there are also some construction that uh, you can think of as using also some sort of LW with leakage assumption. More computer analysis is needed. And I, that concludes my talk. Thank you for listening. And if you have some questions, you can ask them during the Q&A session uh, during the Eurocrypt conference. Thank you.